it's time to plant some sweet corn in the dream garden. We've got three of the six plots in the new dream garden planted already. We got potatoes put in, we got squash and cucumbers in one plot, and we've got tomatoes in another plot. So the fourth plot is gonna get sweet corn. In our part of the country, we can grow several crops of sweet corn within the calendar year. So we can grow a spring crop, and then the last couple years we've also been doing a fall crop, which has worked really well for us. The last couple years, we've been growing a variety called Ambrosia. It's a bicolor, sugary enhanced sweet corn, and it has really done well for us the last few years. It tastes amazing, looks really pretty, grows out really well, and it stores really well, usually about six to seven days in the fridge. But we always like to try new things around here, and so this year, we're gonna try a variety we haven't ever tried before, but that has come highly recommended to us. And that variety we're planting this year is called Incredible. And with a name like Incredible, it's gotta be good. So this is a yellow sweet corn, and this is also a sugary enhanced variety. So we're gonna get some improved storage over those kind of old timey varieties like Silver Queen or something like that. When it comes to growing sweet corn, which everybody loves, there are three common mistakes that we see over and over again that keep people from having a really good sweet corn crop or a really good harvest. The first mistake has to do with the geometry of the sweet corn plot that you're planting. You always wanna plant your sweet corn in a square plot. You never wanna plant it in long rows with just a few rows there. You wanna plant it in a square plot because it's wind pollinated and that's gonna give you the best pollination, the most full ears and the best harvest. The second mistake is water. Sweet corn loves plenty of water. It needs a lot of water. If you ever see those leaves on your sweet corn start to curl up, you know you're kind of starving it of water. So you wanna give it plenty of water throughout the entire growing cycle of the plant. And that's gonna make sure your reproductive parts come in on time, everything's healthy with the plant, and you're gonna get those nice full kernels as well. Now, as far as water goes, we are really big believers in planting corn on drip tape. Drip tape is gonna let you get that water to that root system right where it needs it. It's gonna let you do it efficiently. You're gonna conserve water, and you're also gonna keep that plant fed throughout the growing cycle so it never gets water deprived. And the third mistake we see has to do with fertilizer. Corn likes a lot of water, and it also likes a lot of nitrogen. So we wanna see our corn with the leaves so green they're almost black. We wanna see really nice green leaves on the corn and that means we've gave it plenty of fertilizer and it's nice and healthy. Now we can do this easily through the drip system. We can inject some fertilizer through there, some 20-20-20 or some Chilean nitrate or even some you know, fish and guano. We can also side dress it with some Chilean nitrate or side dress it with some of our chicken manure compost. However you do it, you wanna make sure you give that plant plenty of nitrogen so it's nice and healthy. Now back to the sweet corn planting that we're gonna do today. So the subplots in our new dream garden are 30 by 35. So that's nice and square. Like I mentioned earlier, that's the kind of plot we wanna use for our corn. And I'm putting my corn on three foot row spacing. So you can do 30 inches and I've done 30 inches in the past and it works fine. But I'm gonna do 36 inches this time because it worked out perfectly to get 10 rows in that 30 by 35 plot. A couple days ago, I went ahead and laid my drip tape and got my drip system hooked up. So we bury that drip tape down there and then we'll take our hall cedar here and we'll plant right on top of that drip tape. But before we plant, we need to make sure this thing is calibrated correctly for this incredible sweet corn variety here. So before we plant with our Hoss garden cedar, we always wanna make sure our seed plate is calibrated correctly for the variety that we're planting. So what that means is we wanna make sure these holes are the right size for this seed. Sweet corn, beans, almost any crop out there, you're gonna see some seed size variation from one variety to the next. So the seed could be a different size depending on what variety you're planting. So we need to make sure these holes sizes 
are gonna work for this incredible variety here. So the first thing I'll do is take some seed and I'll just put it in these holes while that seed plate is laying flat there. And that hole in the middle doesn't matter, but these on the outside here, I wanna make sure even my biggest seed can lay flat in that hole and fall right through it without getting stuck or hung up. And it looks like this stock hole size here is gonna work really well for us. So this is not always the case. We kind of got lucky here because this incredible variety works perfect with this hole size. But if you're planting a sweet corn that's got a bigger seed size, you'll probably need to drill out these holes. And you can take you a little step drill bit like this and it works perfect for making those holes larger if you're planting a different variety with a larger seed size. In addition to laying this plate flat on the table and checking that hole size by laying the seeds in there, another thing I like to do is to actually run some seeds through here while it's sitting on the table just as a preemptive measure to make sure this plate is gonna work right for this variety. So I need to go ahead and put my plate in there Take this other plate out. Put all my pieces back in there. And just barely tighten this wing nut. If you tighten that wing nut too tight, it's gonna make this wheel difficult to turn. So I just like to, just down to where it touches the top of that brush right there. And then I'm gonna pour me some seed in here. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. And then I'm gonna take my hopper cover and put it underneath where the seed's gonna drop into. And that's gonna catch the seed. And then I'm just gonna spin this rear wheel and watch it and make sure that the seeds are dropping through there fine. And what I'm watching for here is making sure this rear wheel doesn't hang up. If this rear wheel hangs up a lot on you, that means that you've got seeds hung up in that hopper there. And that usually means that the hole size is too small and you need to make it larger because seeds are getting stuck there. But if we can spin this wheel right here and we don't get any hang ups, and we can see the seeds falling through at the bottom just fine, then we know we're good to go. So now that my seed plate is calibrated and I know it's gonna work nice, I'm just gonna set my depth here. And for sweet corn, I'm gonna set it down to about three quarters of an inch to an inch, somewhere between there. So we'll turn this knob here all the way down and when that bubble right here is flush with this frame, that's an inch. So we're gonna put it kind of right before there. All right, so we got our depth set, we got our seed plate calibrated correctly, and everything's gonna work nice and perfect with our seeder now. And all I've gotta do is just go plant these 10 rows of sweet corn. If you're interested in one of these seeders, I'll put a link in the description below. I'll also put a link to our sweet corn variety so you can check those out and I'm gonna go plant some corn and we will see you guys next time.